So here's the next thing we're doing with the Yazoo. Uh, this here is the fuel gauge slash fuel tank cap. Um, this was in the right fuel tank, which is the one that's uh, disconnected, just completely in pieces. So I had to go in there with a snake hook, of all things, and fish out the float, and then fish out this guy, and then jigger and wiggle and wedge this into the snake hook so I could get that out, and then fish out that o-ring that I didn't know was in there. I guess it's more like a just a rubber band. And uh, yeah, it wasn't broken. It was just falling apart and fell into the tank, so I just put it all back together. Uh, the first thing you gotta do to assemble it is, uh, see in there, there's a little hooked mouth of this uh, spiral bar. And you've gotta stick that through, there's two layers in here, and you gotta stick it through both and hook it over the top one. Um, then, then you take your float, run that over the spiral bar, then you take this o-ring and you slide that over the float, then you take this u-bar, you slide that through these two slots in the float, and then you line it up with these two holes down here, start it in these two holes, and then make sure this little point up here goes into that notch, and uh, then it's back together, and it's uh, easy as that. And I'm confident that this is not the original gas cap, so I got no idea what happened to those, because as you can see up here, this sort of just has like a petrified, sliced open, uh, rubber top to it and I actually need to work out some kind of cover for this just to keep water from dripping into the gas tank and building up over time it's not a huge issue but I'd rather just you know do something to mitigate that if possible uh, this is supposed to have a little clear plastic dome over the top and then it's supposed to have a fuel gauge readout underneath and for whatever reason that gauge is gone but i mean this does have the things down there for the fuel gauge so i don't really know what's going on right here um it's just sort of got like a rubber doohickey on top because you can't see the gauge down in there when it spins see so you can't really tell what you know how much fuel you have so uh i don't really need the fuel gauge to work uh mostly because uh, i don't have any plastic i can use to uh fix this or at least i don't want to have to go through the effort of cutting and molding and bending and shaping a spring-loaded piece of acrylic to cover that because I also don't know if acrylic melts uh, in gas vapor. So uh, we're just going to make something to go over the top of this that still allows this to vent but then just keeps water from dripping directly in. All right, well, after a modicum of thought, uh, I decided to be as lazy as possible, and my ad hoc solution is uh, just, just to cover it chittily with... Uh, piece of navy surplus uh, hurricane tape and uh, it'll keep water out of it and uh, it's not going to damage anything and uh, if I want to change it I just have to peel the tape off and uh, that'll still let it vent because I haven't pressed it down here in the center and I've left these little vents on either side but uh it'll hang on for a season you know that's a that's a decent enough stopgap so uh we're gonna run with that so I went inside, and the old noggin started a jogging. And uh, now I think I'm actually going to try and uh, put something clear on top of this gauge. So like I was saying, I went inside, and I just kept thinking on it. And I realized, you know it would be perfect to make a little clear witness glass for the top of this? A pair of uh, safety glasses. Safety glasses are uh, made of a ballistically laded, or rated acrylic. And the uh, lens is uh, practically the same size as this opening. Uh, as a backup, uh, I also considered uh, cutting the bottom off of a, a soda bottle and uh, trying to jerry-rig that to work and then gluing it in place. And uh, I also found this uh, yielding Christmas light. Uh, this whole exterior is glass, but this inner cap that's acrylic, and it's like, I think it's slightly too small, but it might be perfect, so we're just going to smash that with a hammer and find out. Well, we got this sucker out, and it is indeed ever so slightly too small. I don't think there's going to be enough of a lip, and uh, it looks like, regrettably, 
The safety glasses are in the same boat. Uh, so, I don't really know. But uh, I think I'm going to cut this rubber thing out, cut my losses, and at the very least, I'll stick a Coke bottle on it. So, uh, let's just keep going down this rabbit hole. Holy shit, look at this. Come on now, focus. This used to be clear. Good God, what the hell happened to it? I mean, look at this. This looks like leather. So, okay. Uh, that makes a lot more sense now, but uh, even more questions are, are popping into my head as to uh, how the hell did this uh, end up like that? Well, butter my butt and call me the man with the buttery butt. Uh, that... <laughs> This was clear, and uh, it did actually have uh, a fuel gauge set of, uh, set of fuel gauge markings on it. So uh, I guess I am gonna go with this flat guy here, um, because it looks like uh, this cap is uh, holding down this plate, so I don't want to remove it entirely. So I think I'm just going to get, line her up as best as I can, and uh, then mix up a little bit of epoxy and just try and slather as much of this as possible. And uh, then let that sit overnight and uh, put the whole uh, fuel gauge assembly back together. Alright, so uh, that's looking pretty snazzy. Um, I had uh, just barely enough epoxy left in here. It still looks like there's epoxy in there, but it's lying. Uh, to be able to glue that, uh, I put this thing like this on the table and pressed on it so hard I literally started seeing stars. Like, no shit. Like fucking bright lights floating through my vision. I don't know if it was from the exertion or the fact that I'm still wearing these stupid sunglasses for some reason. But uh, that was kind of worrying. I thought I gave myself an aneurysm. But uh, anyway, uh, I'm just going to put this back together and then stick it back in the vise and uh, let it cure overnight. Well, there's that back together. And uh, as you can see, it works. If I grab the float, you know, it goes from uh, full to uh, right empty. Uh, I don't know why there's an R there and uh, not an E, but uh, whatever. Uh, I'm going to assume it means uh, right empty or right fucked. Uh, one of the two. Uh, fucked and right fucked. But yeah, we're going to let that cure and uh, hope that epoxy uh, holds up uh, filled with gas vapors. I just realized I didn't leave a hole in there, so uh, I'm going to go uh, poke a hole in there so that this can vent. Where's that damn hole? That should be good enough. So now we're back out here with the mower, and uh, we're gonna see if uh, this fuel sender works. Uh, that was my ad hoc solution to uh, keep the water out of the gas tanks, was to uh, stick a couple of my grandma's handmade flower pots on top of them. She was very good at making flower pots, but that aside, we're gonna see if uh, this fuel sender works or not. Uh, also, I still have no idea where that O-ring is supposed to be. I guarantee it's not supposed to be on here. But, uh, that was really the only logical place I saw. So, uh, that's where I've left it. Alright. She's showing mostly empty. And if we look down in the tank... It is, indeed... Mostly empty. So I say that's good enough. Probably works. So uh, we're just going to stick this guy back down in here. Eventually I'm going to move it over to that one. But uh, for the time being, we're going to leave it right yonder. And we're going to come over here and swap out this guy. And uh, I need to do something about that. And I think I'm just going to go with the tape on this guy. No need to get fancy, especially considering that uh, there is there's not a second fuel sender. So uh, we just won't get fancy. We'll we'll leave it like this. All right. All I had was painter's tape. At least all I could find in the 30 seconds I bothered to look. So that'll work. I've got it uh, basically perpendicular to the crack. The crack is like that. So uh, if it builds up any pressure, it'll. It'll, it'll vent, sort of, probably. Maybe, I don't know. I just want to keep the damn water out. 
So yeah, uh, now I gotta disconnect that tank which uh, that bolt down there was fighting me and uh, dump out all that sludge. Well, I came over here to check the dipstick and I noticed something that's a bit worrying. You see it's got, you know, plenty of oil in there, but, oh, it must have just dripped off. There was a little bit of homogenized oil in there. Just a bit. I'm going to wipe that off and check the level. I tried checking the level last time, but I'd already cranked the engine and the oil was sprayed everywhere so I couldn't get a proper reading, but it looks like we're right about perfect. All right, dipstick is clean. Let's check this one more time. See, and now it's going to make like make it look like it's overfilled. I don't know what's up with this damn crankcase. Here's another thing I just noticed. You, you know this shitty not right deck wheel I put back on there? Well, back on there? Well, it turns out it was actually back on there because there, these are all the wrong deck wheels. Like, look at this. See how much erosion there is down there? And, you know, these are the same shape as that one. They're, they're definitely not right. And if they are right, then uh, they were wrong to begin with. But, uh... <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Do you see that shoulder there? Good God. They've been running ragged this whole time. So that's annoying. Uh, I'm also just realizing that, uh, those are like trailer hitch pins. Oh, hell, is that? Oh, and that's totally wallowed out over there, too. That one's not like, good God. I gotta ask my cousin how she ended up with this thing, because it is wrecked. This has to be like government surplus or something. All right, we're back to working on the Yazoo. Uh, if you're up to date on your channel lore, this is the uh, dented in dump cherry can that I found that I uh, uh, was able to put some oomph back into. And my plan for getting all this gas out is to take this uh, primer bulb and rust filled fuel filter setup that I used uh, on the Briggs and Stratton to pump all that old gas out and into here so that I can save it so that I can try and use it again for no particular reason. And uh, once we get that as far as we can, I'm going to take both tank straps off of both tanks and then dump the last little bit of sludge out of the bottom of each and then I'm going to fill that back up with fresh e-free gas and stick that gauge over there. And uh, then I think we're going to send the engine again just to see if that fixes some of the lingering issues. But at the moment, what I'm working on down here are the Schrader valves, and I was able to get both off. And uh, yeah, they are nasty. This is the one that was stuck um, open on that guy, and this is the one that was stuck closed on that guy, and both of them fought. I had to rip that one out with needle nose pliers uh, because it's bent. And yeah, we're just going to uh, take these Schrader valves out of these 40 year old. Uh, valve stems that are lying around and they're like the consistency of rock now Well, they don't sound like it, but they definitely are because I couldn't get them in the Mercedes rims And uh, we're just gonna stick those uh, right back in and hope for the best look at that these re these really are old So uh, yeah, that's some uh, that's some ye olden valve stem technology right there We're just going to forget the fact that it's very wrong looking and uh, just uh Chammer on down in there and uh, hope that it works. I have a feeling it won't. Well, bad news. Uh, these don't work. I've got no idea what the hell these are doing and what's going on with them, but uh, they don't work, so we're shit out of luck because these are the only valve stems I brought, like a dumbass. So hell, I guess we're uh, guess we're gonna beat on these uh, nasty ones and uh, see if we can get them to work. No, you're not gonna be able to see this, but at least pretend. Actually, no, that does come out a little well. Uh, that is a. Uh, that valve stem is just a right full of crap. So I'm gonna go get a wire and clean that out, and uh, let's uh, let's see if that improves. Cause at the moment, that's uh, that's what it sounds like with no valve stem in it. And uh, I've just cleaned up the old valve stems, and I put that one, uh, I put this valve stem back in that one, and we're going to take that valve stem and stick it back in there. I. I, I think they'll be fine, and uh, if not, uh, we'll just not care. Okay, so old valve stems are back in. This one is perfectly fine, and this one is practically flat again. This this valve stem is 
ruined, so we'll have to pop this off the bead and replace that at a later date. But that's not today. Another thing I just noticed is uh, just gonna need some new blades. Um, yeah, so uh, that's the cutting surface, and uh, that's the back, and she gone. I do have transmission oil. Got plenty of 20W50. Some, you know, 30 year old Castrol. And we're gonna top up that here in a minute. I also have some cans of 20W50. And I think we're going to use this stuff up too. I think we're gonna try and use that first just so I can get rid of them. But before we do any of that, we're going to start pumping out the fuel tank. And this is my current invention to get all the fuel out. And in order to keep this thing straight, I've got a little welding rod or something jammed in here just so that this hose stays parallel uh, within the tank and doesn't bang all over the place. All right, so I'm gonna try and use these cans first. And I was able to find a, um, an owner's manual for a different Yazoo that uses a similar transaxle. And it said to fill it to here said to fill it to the hole on the side of the transmission where the hose connects. And uh, from what I can see right there, that is somewhere between this hole and here. So we're just going to fill to the hash mark uh, to be safe. And uh, I've just got a funnel that's way too small. And we're going to uh, jam it down in there and try and fill this up as best we can without spilling oil all over these lines. So wish me luck. All right, no going back. Drink up, little mower. Sip, sip, sip. Alright, we're on to can number two now. Don't know if it's going to need more than two. It did come up after I added that first one, so I think we're mostly there. I think it has an eight quart capacity. And with two quarts in, let's see where we're at. I think we're there. Mm, yep, yep, I think we're perfect actually. Just above the hash mark, you can see it down in there. Yeah, it's probably slightly overfilled uh, according to the dipstick, but you know, this thing was also running, so I'm sure there's a bunch of air bubbles in the passage. So, I'm not too concerned. I think I've got it just barely long enough. Seems to be working. A lot of pumping ahead of me. Well, after many great trials and tribulations, I was able to get the left gas tank off, and whoever designed this tank strap system needs to be uh, strung up and quartered in Town Square. Uh, it is absolutely, utterly idiotic. Obscene. Like, no wonder this dang company went out of business. So they put it right here so that you cannot get anything in there in order to be able to access these damn nuts you have to get a 3 16 allen into here and a 7 16 socket onto here except they gave you no clearance on the socket to be able to actually fit the socket in there and they did a lock nut so you have you have no room underneath this to get anything on there and it's also directly in the path of the dang tread, so it just fills with dirt and rust. And then this whole end of the dang thread gets worn off. So you can't back the nut off, and you can't get the Allen wrench in, and you can't fit anything in there. And you torque on it enough, and it just starts splitting the tank strap in half, and you're just shit out of luck. Idiotic. Uh, finished with the uh, the tank straps. Could not get that one off. They, they fought me every second of the way. Did get that one off and I put that back on upside down so I can access it. Was not able to get the front strap off. I just, I got it off of the tank, but I could not get the bolt off. So we're gonna call those good. Uh, poured in some gas, swished it around, dumped into the jerry can, poured in a little bit more gas, swished it around, dumped that into the jerry can. And uh, then I put probably half gallon of fresh E-free gas in there. And uh, let's see. Came over here, greased up all the Zerk fittings, and uh, then I just opened her up, 
I had to crank her for 30 minutes to prime the entire system, and uh, then I drove her around. Uh, she really did not want uh, the PTO on. It died the first time I put the PTO on. I had to feather the PTO on, on until this whole thing is running. And I think it's just because it, there's so much crap underneath this cover that it's slowing it down. But uh, here's my cut path. And uh, as you can see, it, it's not cutting. There is literally like no cutting blade left on the left blade. And there's no mulching section of the blade left on the on the center or the right one so those have to be replaced uh, that front deck wheel up there you know the one that's wallowed out was nearly about to come off so anyway after I did that checked everything both both sets of brakes works uh, forward works reverse works and finished all that then I opened up the transmission and uh, she was about another half quart low so I topped her up and yeah, then I uh, cut the fuel thing off, cut the fuel valve off, and then just let her idle for about 30 seconds, maybe a minute before she died. And uh, here she sits. I think I'm going to run her one more time just for you guys and to uh, see if the transmission sucks anything else up. I was running the hydraulics and I was putting it in forward and reverse. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to run around and uh, see what kind of trouble I can get into. But for the moment, I'm not going to hook up that tank just because I don't want to have to fool with any of that. All right, let's get her going. She cuts this thick stuff. That's all it took. Ooh, yeah, she is just right full of garbage. These things like to fight coming off too, so just be mindful. What you gotta do is you gotta take those knobs off, lift it up, and then just yank and rip on it till it comes out. Then to get it back in, you just do the reverse. That's much better. I even found my Zerk fittings. Don't think there's one on the center spindle. But there's one on each of the outside ones, and one on that. Either I'm down there. I think the center spindle has got its own self-contained gearbox in there. So I'm gonna get to greasing them and uh, figuring out what size blades this son of a bitch takes. Um, there is the uh, the info for the deck right there, at the very least. All right. Now everything is nice and greasy. This didn't take too much. The Zerk fitting popped off of that one after I put three times as much as I did in that one in there, so that one's probably absolutely ruined. And uh, just like uh, that arm up over there, 
that one's about plugged and uh, it really backed up the uh, grease gun but I was able to get some grease through it so I'm gonna call that good I'm gonna shove them things back in well, here's my current next step in the Yazoo adventure I'm out here after work at night with a flashlight clipped to the bottom of the deck with the deck held up with a farm jack trying to get one of these blades off so uh, I can figure out how to get new blades for it uh, as you can see right there that blade is broken and uh, that blade is broken but actually that far blade over there I don't know if you can see it no it's not quite lined up but the far one over there actually looks to be intact I thought it was broken off you know I thought it was sheared off like right there like right where that wing is broken off on there but I think the far one's actually in good shape however <laughs> I can't find any way to buy these blades these are uh, I think they're 0206-970s from Yazoo, aftermarket number 91-866. Nobody makes them, all out of stock everywhere. So anyway, I'm trying to get one of these blades off, which I currently have a strap wrench, a 1516s breaker bar, and a second 1516s breaker bar set up to be able to get it off. And I'm pretty sure I obliterated this spindle, and uh, this, this thing might need a deck overhaul. It may need three new spindles of a different manufacturer in order to be able to use new blades. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the correct size pulleys or whatnot, how any of this is going to work. I'm just trying to get a blade off right now, and I've gotten it to the point where, you know, the blade's loose, because I came out here yesterday, and, uh, let's see, I got a cheater bar, and I stuck it onto the blade and wedged that next to the jack all safe-like, and then cranked on it until I think I obliterated something in here, snapped the, the shaft on the spindle somehow. But anyway, I'm out here with a strap wrench and all this other stuff now, and I'm getting it to spin. Because uh, before, I was spinning the bolt, and the blade was staying still. And there's this little metal lip that you can't see that I'm holding onto with the strap wrench. And that was spinning with the bolt. And then when I came here today, I took the cover off. And uh, the uh, the top nut on top of the of the thing is spinning like independently of it's just the whole thing is fucked and I don't really understand what is going on I don't really understand what goes on in a mower spindle to begin with I was pretty sure it was just a shaft and a bearing hook to a pulley that you know the blade bolted to and assumedly the blade bolted to that shaft with a slightly non you know 100% like mechanical fit sort of a friction fit just so that if it hit like a rock or something it didn't totally seize the engine, you know, but that, you know, that's what the belt is for as well. But anyway, uh, I'm going to get to uh, getting this blade off so I can figure out what kind of hole it has in there to see if I can buy something else that'll fit. I mean, these are, these are 21 and 3 8 inch blades and uh, no one, I think John Deere's the only one who makes anything in that size, but they've got like, I think they had a seven star pattern in the middle. Anyway, I'm going to quit yammering and get this damn blade out. Well, uh, here's something interesting for you. Uh, no wonder it felt so damn weird. Uh, <laughs> I didn't take the bolt off. I took the nut off of the fucking top. Look at that. That's just a straight shaft. That's This blade is only held on via friction fit, apparently. Because uh, I just uh, I took the nut off of the top. So, uh, yeah. I think I partially took the bolt off of the bottom, but... Uh, I don't know. I guess I, I don't... I'm not really certain what the hell is going on down here, so uh, we're just going to take this whole shebang back to the garage and uh, figure out what the fuck what the fuck to do. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Um, Alrighty, so the mystery's been solved. There's a reason why this bolt didn't come off, because it is it is the bolt. That's how it's designed, is you just take this... 8 inch 5 8 bolt out of the middle of the spindle by taking this nut off the top so I was doing it wrong that's why and uh, luckily this is just held in by a 5 8 hole and uh, here's the the blade number on this as well MHC 94271442 and I was able to find some uh, replacement blades that uh, don't use the same aftermarket code uh, all, all you need is a 21 and uh, 3 8 inch blade with a 5 8 hole in the middle and you're golden 
you know, anything that has that'll work. So uh, I've got three blades ordered. I think they were like $14 a pop, so uh, cheap enough. So we're just going to blow out the microphone and get this back in. And uh, then I'm going to move on to uh, getting the carburetor out of here so I can rebuild it. I also uh, bought another uh, deck wheel and uh, we're gonna stick that over there once we get all of this jacked down. Well, once I knew the trick to it, that was way easier. So uh, we're just gonna, take, come on now, don't fight me. So, so we're just gonna let her on down, move over to that deck wheel and then uh, figure out how to get this uh, carb out. Well, the shiny new deck wheel is on and I need to trim that bolt. Uh, I still need to figure out something about that wallowed out abomination over there, but that's another day problem. Currently getting the carb out, uh, three bolts on the top, and uh, this top cover comes out, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, pretty nasty. And uh, there's the carb. That's uh, it's all dirt built up on it. I was able to get the bottom clean with the air compressor, but not the top, so we're going to try and take this apart uh, um, without filling the entire thing up with dirt. And uh, yeah, this uh, this choke lever over here is uh, it's about to give up the ghost, so that's fun. So yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep on keeping on chipping out away at that. Goal is to get that out, cover up the hole with painters tape, and uh, we're gonna rebuild the carb. Got a kit sitting over there in Theseus. All right, I think the carb is finally ready to come off. Uh, you've got to disconnect this fuel line. Uh, it does not want to come off for me, so I disconnected it up here at the fuel shutoff. I've just got painters tape on uh, everything that is a fuel inflow or an air inflow, so I've got this covered up. Uh, it's two bolts on either side to get the carb off, but before you do that, you gotta disconnect the uh, shutoff solenoid there. It's just a little spade connector, plugs into here. Uh, let's see, disconnected the uh, throttle. It's got a, um, a little spring that hooks in there, and then it's got one of these little snap connectors down here on the bottom, and so you just push this to the side, clip it off of the bar, and then pull it right out. And uh, still gotta disconnect the uh, choke lever, but I need the carb off so that I can wiggle that out. And uh, that's, that's all I did, other than clean about five pounds of crap off it. So let's see if it comes out. There it goes. Good, gasket's still intact. Let's see, and of course the throttle bar went right into that hole, so I need three hands, I'll be back. All right, carbs off, and of course, of course, the second I pick it up, that falls off the side right into the intake. So I'm going to go find a vacuum cleaner to suck that out of there before, because if I touch that, it's going to disintegrate. And we'll be back, and hopefully I didn't just ruin the engine. All right, this is all covered up, lying in wait. Put all the bolts back where they're supposed to be. Got this together, I'm gonna take this whole monstrosity home and clean it, and uh, hopefully it stops leaking gas. All right, so we got the car busted open, and I'm just in here looking for anything that could uh, cause our uh, a fuel leak at shutoff or fuel leak while running. My guess is it's probably the needle, and the needle is not sealing, and it's just f forcing fuel in here. And it's filling up this bowl too high, and then it's pushing around and out and through the Venturis or Jet or however the hell this lawnmower car works. So I'm just in here looking for O-rings and needle tips. So I haven't taken the, the float out yet to get at the needle. But I did notice this guy, and I apologize, I know absolutely nothing about carburetors, so I don't know what anything is called, but this o-ring right here is a little bit damaged, a little pretty dang flat. So uh, we're going to try and replace these, and I have uh, no idea which of these are the correct ones. Um, assuming those, I don't know, we'll figure it out. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to blindly rummage around in here, I'm going to replace the bowl gasket. Although it actually, it looks pretty good. Well, it's got some crud in it, but we'll replace it anyway because we're in here and that's, it's not a um, fiber one, so it, it'll be easy. And the uh, car's pretty clean. I think I'm just going to get most of the plastic bits out and just spray to get whatever crud I can off and uh, wipe down these ceiling surfaces and call it a day. I didn't get uh, these O-rings, I'm fairly confident. And uh, if I was supposed to get them, they certainly sent the wrong goddamn ones. 
So I'm just not going to mess with that. That's the main jet. Oh, I did test the uh, solenoid. Where did I put that? Right over there. This guy hooked up a uh, 9 volt to it. And uh, she goes in and out. So, I mean, that could still be the problem. It could be that it's not sealing properly. Um, but then again, I don't really know how well this actually seals against gas. It's not a very strong spring. Uh, and anyway, the with the way the system works, the, the needle should be doing most of that work. So that's that's my prime target. All right, pulled the bowl off. There is the needle. And uh, how well it'll focus. The needle is not in horrible shape. It does have somewhat... Come on now, focus. It does have a smidge of a lip. But I think the bigger problem is uh, that thing down in there. There's, a, there's just a big piece of crud down there on the seat. So that's probably what's blocking the needle. So uh, we're going to clear that out. And uh, I'll replace the needle in the seat along with the spring just to be safe. Uh, we'll replace the uh, bowl gasket. Uh, I really want to replace these O-rings, but I'm not confident that those are for it. I think those might be for the idle mixture screw. I don't really know. They, they don't look quite right. I, none of these look right. You know, I kind of want to replace that guy. These actually, these aren't in terrible shape. They're just dirty. You know, main jet's clear, as far as I can tell. I'm still going to spray stuff through every passageway. I really want to, I really want to replace those. I need to clean all that crap out of there, too. But I don't trust these O-rings. I don't trust them. They just, they don't look quite right. Um, I'll take a look, but um, no promises. All right, she's going back together now. Got her nice spick and span. There's a big pile of crud down in there. Got everything clean out of all the passageways. Confirmed flow. Uh, I did replace the O-rings on the main jet down there. I replaced the O-rings on this guy as well. And I was considering not replacing uh, the bowl gasket because that one's not in terrible shape. But every single one of these O-rings that I pulled off of uh, this guy and the main jet, except for that one, or those two over there, uh, broke right in half. So uh, I decided, uh, yeah, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to trust any of this rubber. So uh, I've just replaced everything, and I replaced this O-ring over here on the solenoid. So yeah, we're just going to slap all this back together, and uh, just hope it, hope it works. Um, bowl does not sit level, but I'm assuming it's not supposed to because I can't adjust it. So uh, well, I guess I can think sort of I don't know we'll play with that and uh, we're just gonna hope this works all right carpets back together um, the way you set the float bowl height uh, by the way is since it's got that spring-loaded needle you have to hold it at an angle until the float just touches the the spring on the needle and then you set it level so that was a pain in the ass so I just did that put it all back together and uh, we'll see if it works. Uh, some of the O-rings fought me, well, probably because it's like 40 out. So uh, just a dab of two-stroke oil, not a lot, just enough to wet it, and it went together like a champ. So uh, I don't have any spare intake gaskets, so uh, we're just going to continue to use that. That's not going to affect performance because that just holds that cover onto the top. Uh, so it's not going to create a vacuum leak or anything. Plus, it's only around this bolt hole over here. Just may let some crap in, and I don't care. So we're going to run with it. Um, did notice on the uh, fuel inlet, uh, there is a uh, set your lawnmower on fire hole just in the bottom of this for no particular reason. It looks like it's factory. It's just dead in the middle. There's just like a you know, like 364 hole. I guess it's a little smaller in 1 8 a little bigger in 1 16th, and it's like right up to the edge of the fuel line, and I just don't like it, so I'm going to replace that with uh, another length of hose, and uh, then we won't have to worry about that anymore. I mean, I'm not going to have to worry about it anyway, because I'm giving this to somebody. Well, carb's back on. Everything went together just fine, but for some reason now the throttle is sticking, and I'm not really certain why. So watch this. Put the throttle all the way open. Throttle's all the way open. Let's look at the choke. Choke goes to full. Turns out the uh, the choke and the throttle interrupt each other. So that's the reason why I couldn't get the choke to close before is because I had the throttle closed. But if you open the throttle all the way, the choke opens and closes just fine. But now, watch this. I'm going to close the throttle. Now look at the throttle, the butterfly valve. 
which you can't see because phone, but just wide ass open. Didn't close at all. That's because this guy right here is sticking. See? Independently of this, because this has tons of play, no problem. The cable isn't sticking. It's not the cable, it's this. This is just deciding it doesn't want to move for some reason. So we're just going to take some of this super old oil and just slather the absolute piss out of this and uh, hope it improves. It's also probably because it's cold out, so, you know, tolerances. I tried loosening this and it made no difference. Just made everything else worse. So, eh, there's nothing. Just gonna slather the fuck out of this and uh, expect it to catch all of the sand and dirt everywhere, make everything worse. I haven't touched any of this. The only thing I've done is disconnect that and disconnect that. So, yeah, not, not really sure what's going on. Just keep messing with it. All right, I just gave up. I, I cannot figure out what is wrong with that stupid thing down there. It just doesn't want to do what it's supposed to do. So we're just going to let vacuum figure that out. And uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really certain. Um, also, I didn't change the uh, fuel line here uh, because this like Chinese Amazon uh, 5 16 fuel line I got is like closer to 3 8 and it doesn't seal really well uh, so yeah I'm have to go look see if I accidentally bought 3 8 or something but uh it doesn't want to seal and I'm not going to chance it on that and I don't have any uh, um, 5 16 fuel line lying around that's long enough all I've got is like four inch pieces so we're just gonna stick this puppy back on open up the fuel valve crank on it and uh, then just let it sit and see if our oil gets gassy. Because, I mean, nothing I can really do at this point. And if it's still gassy, I'm just going to buy a new carburetor. Um, and then I'll be, I think, 0 for 5 on rebuilding carburetors. Um, I guess, I, no, I guess, well, actually, no, I didn't rebuild the Evinrude. I just took it apart, cleaned all the ants out, and then put it back together. Anyway, um... Yeah, we're just going to hope this works because I want to get it out of my yard and I should have blades showing up at the house today. Put those on it and go park it at my neighbor's yard. They're in my cousin's. So, yeah. We're, ju we're just going to feed her some beans and hope magic happens. So wish me luck. Oh, yeah. There's water on that seat, ain't it? Mm, wet butt. Well, she cuts. Uh, she doesn't cut that great. Uh, I'm probably doing it wrong. I don't know how to drive a three-wheeler. It's got a hydraulic brakes on either side. Well, actually, I, I think they're drum brakes, whatever they are. Um, but you can brake one side of the transmission and turn it like a zero turn, but you have to run it with your left foot, and I'm just not used to it. But it seems to cut. Got some force behind it. It's just not, it's a very tall mower. I don't think I can get it any lower. It's at two inches. Um, I guess I, I can move the deck wheels up, that's about it, but, uh, cut through this stuff just fine. Um, you know, this is all thin, but, you know, these are hay grasses, so, you know, they're stout. Um, eight through them, it really does not like engaging the PTO, you gotta feather it on. You gotta, like, push it in, and then when it bogs down, back it off, and then push it in, and all that, but it does cut, it just takes... It's a lot of oomph to get those blades going. Um, could be because they're cold, could be because the spindles are totally sacked out, could be all the moss stuck underneath them, I don't know. Um, but she is cutting. So, that's a good sign. It will work and it will cut grass, but there's a learning curve for me, although I don't intend to keep this, so that's not a problem. So yeah, uh, I guess I'm going to do this periodically. You know, just run it for a 15 minutes or so. I still got to clean all the cooling fins. I need to pressure wash it, get all the crap out so it can cool down. Yeah, it got it got real hot real fast. Uh, don't know if it's supposed to or not, but I can feel the heat coming off of it. Then again, it is also like 
55 degrees out. Probably shouldn't be running it this cold with that straight 30 weight, but I don't care. All right, here she's gonna sit for a minute. Like I was saying, she's as low as she'll go. Over here, it only cuts to two inches. This is this is this is not a finishing mower, um, but she does cut. Uh, I still need to figure out a way to get some more air into this because that's about flat. Need to replace both of those pins. Need to work out a plate system for that. <sighs> need to clean all of this shit out so it'll cool. Yeah, but just busy work. All I need to do now is confirm that the carburetor rebuild worked. And uh, then change on the oil after that. Alright, so I went and ate lunch and I've just been letting her sit. And I pulled the dipstick out and it smells strongly of gas. Uh, I didn't close the fuel shut off and I didn't run it dry on purpose to see if it was leaking. And looking down here into the carb... I don't know if you see that because the camera's a piece of shit but there's a little droplet right there next to the venturi jet whatever you want to call it thing that shoots gas uh into the carburetor and i'm assuming that's gasoline so it looks like it's leaking around that port and i don't know if there's like an o-ring on that or something but uh yeah, it seems to be something just inherently wrong with the carburetor um i don't know i i guess i'll run this a little bit more and uh then cut it off and see if i can catch it leaking like catch it in the act because if it's so then i've definitely pinpointed the issue and the solution solution is either keep using that or buy another carburetor so uh we're gonna give that a whirl and see what the hell happens. All right, just ran her for about a minute. Let's see if it's doing something squirrely. I'm not seeing anything yet. I did confirm that that droplet was gasoline. I went and got a stick and uh, gave it a whiff. There's some vapor wafting down there, but I'm not seeing any dripping. Guess I'm just gonna keep doing this all day and uh, see if I can catch it in the act. All right, so I've been running her for, you know, 30 seconds to a minute and then letting her sit for 15, 30 minutes or so. Just been doing that, probably done that about six times now. And uh, there has been uh, no further signs of gas leaking. I can see absolutely no gas leaking into this every single time. There has been nothing and I've been leaving that open. Uh, that first time I think was just a fluke. I think it was because I, I killed it uh, with choke or something and it just, you know, had a huge vacuum, sucked a lot of fuel out, stalled itself out or something, and there was just a drop left. I don't think that was a leak. So I'm thinking the carburetor's good. It's not leaking at all. Uh, the oil does smell a bit gassy, but then again, you know, half of that is non-detergent. And, you know, I was, you know, running this before without the carburetor fixed. So I'm thinking it was just that needle. Um, you know, I'm going to keep doing this, you know, when, until I have everything else done. I'm just going to keep going like this and uh, just see, see if it gets any worse. But I think I've, I think I fixed it. All right, got the deck wheels off and... Uh, just show you how bad these things really are so this is the one off the back take my cotter pin out push that pull this bushing off and there's the rear pin uh, it's a lot worse than I thought it was and as well let's take the front roller, pull this off, knock our bushing off, and uh, here's the front pin. Ain't, ain't much left of that. It's amazing to see where that bushing was sitting that whole time and where it was sitting in the deck down here. And uh, just look at this hole. 
that's like a full inch and a quarter tall and like seven eighths of an inch wide and this one over here is three quarters of an inch and just look at how much metal has been eaten this is supposed to be square right there and it has just ate all of that away so we're gonna mostly ignore that because the rest of the deck is in great shape and I'm just going to find like some bushings or oversized um, pins or something or some kind of something and uh, we're just gonna make all this work I think I can get some trailer hitch pins and I think those will actually fit through here it just needs to be about four and a half inches I think four and a quarter would actually work but uh, I'll take what I can get over there I've just got you know regular old carriage bolts and stuff just as a stopgap so I'm gonna see if I can work something out, and I you know I guess I could always get some five eighths rod or something, drill a hole through one end, and put a little bit of threads on the other, and you know make my own. That's probably cheaper than buying hitch pins, or it may not be. It's definitely less work just to buy hitch pins, but uh, we'll see how much of a shit I actually give when push comes to shove. Well, here's what I've cobbled together for uh, replacement pins. Um, I just found a four inch bolt, since I know that four inches will work now, I was running off the assumption that only four and a half would. And this was an eight inch bolt, which I couldn't quite get into two, so I just did one. I just cut it off at four and a quarter, and then sanded it a little flat, and drilled a 5.30 seconds hole through it, and the cotter pin fits right in, and I've got a washer on either side. And that one's pretty good. That's about, I think that's a half inch bolt there. Uh, I think this is 7 16 that might be 9 16 I don't know, don't really matter. And uh, did the same to this, didn't realize it was a grade eight until I started drilling through it and wondered, why is, why is this destroying my drill bit? And then I realized it was a grade eight. So I did the sensible thing and uh, powered through it with a sheer willpower. And so yeah, just drilled a 5 30 seconds hole straight through a grade eight. And this one should be barely, barely long enough with the two skinniest washers I could find. And so I guess the real test is uh, putting these on and make sure they fit. Uh, I know that one will fit. Don't think, it's, I should be able to squeeze it and make that one fit. Um, I did find my trailer hitch pins and they're not quite right. These are like three and a half, three and a quarter inches from bottom of the cotter pin to this joint right here. So uh, I don't think they're going to work, but I will take them with me and test on them uh, just for science's sake. So guess let's put these in the mower. And the deck wheels are back on with their new pins. Had to uh, massage that one a little bit with the old persuasion stick, but uh, after a little bit of a re-geometryification uh, she fit on there just perfect so we're gonna run with that uh, until I forget that I did that and uh, never touch it again well the blades are off uh, they didn't fight me as much as the other one because I know what I'm doing now there are the new blades and as you can see the old blades are about a quarter of an inch longer uh, those are apparently 21s, and these are supposed to be 21 and 3 8 uh, It's not going to make a difference, and if it does, it's not my problem. So yeah, I got these spindles apart. Uh, I put the other one back together wrong, uh, like really wrong. I had the crush washer upside down, and I had one of these spacers on top and one below. Uh, the correct order is crush washer with the cup side in, then the blade, then two spacers, then the bottom of the spindle, and then all the way at the top, you've got the one spacer washer and the nut. So uh, I'm going to break those bad boys out. This is uh, what they are. I think it's the Husqvarna number there is the one that I'm using. Uh, makes sense because uh, Yazoo keys, I think, were bought by a Husqvarna at some point. I think they were owned by Husqvarna when this was made. So that would be why uh, it's got a blade pattern that's compatible with Husqvarna, I'd suspect. And yeah, uh, the blades are in better shape than I thought, but still terrible shape. You know, there's a swoop to the cutting edge, and there's no wing left on it. 
Uh, this one isn't as swoopy, but there's a lot less material. And uh, this one that was on the uh, left side of the mower, it still has the wing, but as you can see, it's it's eroding through right there in the middle. And uh, this one's actually full of grass. So yeah, it was time for them to be changed. Well, as you can see, I just took her for a test drive, and she cuts pretty dang good. She's real quick. She's not the most uh, maneuverable, but she is quick. And uh, you can get some real G-forces turning on that thing, because uh, unlike a zero turn, uh, you're back here and not over the top of the wheels. So when you're going full speed, and this, this sucker gets about eight miles an hour, you can just slam on one of those brakes and cock the wheel and just woo, and it's pretty fun. So anyway, just went and mowed my acre up there at the front. I'll go show you. But I am noticing she does have an oil leak. Front main seal looks to be. Because uh, there's wet coming there out the front of the crank. Nothing out the back that I can see yet. But there is wetness over there on the front. That would be our oil leak. See, there it is. Now, 100% certain it's uh, oil. Could be hydraulic, I guess. Well, no, no hydraulic lines run that way. That's oil. But yeah, she cuts pretty good. Let's see how we did on gas. Well, she used a pretty good amount of gas. I don't know how much I've had in there. Maybe three quarter, half gallon. Probably three quarters of a gallon. She's down to about maybe a pint so uh not the most fuel efficient thing but uh should run she's got decent power you know not she's not a bush hog she's not a tractor but she's got enough power it, it bogs down whenever i go over uh heavy chunks of moss or a thick patch of saint augustine or a big old patch of Baha'i grass, but this, this thin, wispy um, meadow grass is up here. It just eats it. I can go full speed and it'll still cut it. But, yeah, here's what I did. Uh, I was able to cut around all of my fruit trees without taking any out. Didn't even run into any of them. So, that worked out pretty good. She cut this just fine. There's the Baha'i grass right here. That grows right under the front of this tree. This is hay. That's a hay grass. And uh, she, she doesn't like going into that, but she doesn't stall out. You can just hear the engine drop about 300, 400 RPM whenever you run into it. Still needs to be feathered. When putting on the PTO, uh, as it warms up, it uh, gets a little bit easier. But uh, it really doesn't like it coming on when it's cold. So, don't know how to change that. Uh, gear gearbox may need to be lubricated. Well, probably does. Manual says do it every 500 miles. Or 500 hours. And it's got a thousand on it. So, uh, I'm confident uh, my cousin didn't do it. So, she's at least, uh, what, like 79 hours overdue. But that's not the end of the world. So, yeah, I, th I think she's about good. Uh, I haven't smelled the gas yet, or the oil yet. We'll do that, but uh, I had no gas scent when I smelled it this morning. There's a whiff of gas, but nothing I would be worried about. So, yeah, I think the carb was the issue. And I think my fix is taken. So I guess all I need to do now is just change the oil, put actual proper oil in it, change the filter, and uh, then I think she's ready to send to my cousin. All right, it's oil change time finally. Uh, I was going to use the traditional southern staple of a margarine container, but it's too small, probably only hold a quart. So I've got the good Tupperware jammed in here. Uh, this mower, the oil change is just a pain in the ass. They give you so little room, like, come on, throw me a bone. But anyway, it's really damn cold out. I was going to do a hot swap, but uh, there is just 
not the temperature for it so we're just gonna do this cold if I can get it open and uh, let this drip for about three hours so yeah I'm gonna go eat lunch while this is draining and uh, when we come back uh, we'll inspect the oil and see if there's any chunks of metal in it and uh, then we're gonna be filling her up with some good old high mileage 10w30 and hopefully that should help with that front main seal leak and we'll stick on the new cheap Chinese filter yummy all right she's been going for about 30 minutes and uh, about filled up my Tupperware so I'm gonna let that go just a little bit more and while I was waiting I came over here and checked transmission dipstick and uh, she was down a couple of ounces so I put maybe a eighth of a jug maybe two ounces more in there and uh, she's reading about perfect so we'll put that back together And yeah, I uh, guess I'll pull the uh, oil filter while I'm waiting and uh, let that drain as well. And I did check it already and it's only on hand tight, so well, actually no, they n aren't over each other. Well, whatever, I'm going to pressure wash it, so I'll just get oil everywhere. No big deal. Alright, here comes the goo. And like I said, I got made sure to get high mileage. Uh, high mileage stuff usually has additives that help swell up old seals and uh, stop oil leaks. So uh, hopefully this should uh, band-aid that uh, front main seal leak. And the capacity is uh, 1.75 uh, to uh, 1.7 to 1.9. So I'm going to shoot for 1.8 and uh, then add as needed. Uh, normally I would just throw all two quarts in there uh, because I have OCD and it just uh, feels right. But uh, I'm going to try and avoid doing that if I can. So, uh, plus, you know, has the front main seal leaked, so it's probably best to uh, save a little bit of oil to top it off at a later date. New oil's in. Here's the old oil. Didn't look terribly bla bad, but uh, it's super black for uh, having been run for, like, what, two hours tops? So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of crap in that engine. And uh, that's with a uh, half non-detergent oil probably just because of how old it is um, it's a little bit shiny which is kind of concerning but I'm gonna ignore it um, doesn't really smell like gas anymore it more so just smells like Tupperware but there's there's like an inescapable aroma coming from it that kind of smells like gas but it's definitely not gas I think it's just old as shit oil so uh, I'm not gonna worry about it and uh, I'll just have to go by my cousin's and check it after he runs it for 10 hours or so and just make sure that the oil isn't getting gassy. But yeah, I'm going to dump that in here because I just did oil changes yesterday, so that worked out. So the only thing left to do on this is to uh, fire her up and uh, make sure she uh, doesn't throw a rod or anything. You're good. the best sign probably just because it's cold standby well I was out here uh, mowing the yard and I was just about done and uh, pulled her over uh, idled her down uh, just to see if uh, you know see if she was running right see if she was overheating or something and uh, she just blasted oil right out the front crank seal onto the exhaust and uh, shooting white smoke out that's what all this wet is so uh, that's interesting, or maybe it came out of the dipstick, I don't know, it, it just started belching white smoke and I killed it. And uh, as you can see up there, there's, uh, there's oil sitting underneath the breather. You know, there's wet right there, there's wet there. So uh, I'm thinking the, thinking the breather is messed up and uh, she's not breathing properly and uh, she's belching a little bit of oil. We'll check the air cleaner and see what that looks like, but uh, that's not a good sign. Uh, better in oil in the, or better in gas in the crankcase, but not a good sign. So I've been running her for about two hours probably. So we're gonna take a quick peek down in the carburetor and see if it's full of engine oil.
exhaust has not been smoking, so I don't think it's got excessive blow-by. Yeah, plenty of white smoke. There's white smoke in here as well. So there is blow-by. But uh, I'm not seeing anything crazy. That breather doesn't look to be super belchy. I think it's just a bad crank seal, which uh, isn't the hardest thing to replace on one of these, but it does require pulling the entire engine and uh, pretty much all the auxiliaries, and uh, I'm not doing that. So uh, I think it'll be fine for the minute, uh, as long as you don't do what I just did. And uh, I'm going to see if I can get it fired back up, and hopefully uh, it's not a death nail for this engine. All right, let's see if this does something. Well, it looks like the transmission is not happy either because it's belching some stuff. Uh, doesn't look like any of the lines are leaking, which is a good sign, I guess. But does look like uh, that is burping. Uh, I'm wondering if this plastic bit on top is a breather. Uh, I guess I must have overfilled it uh, with that last little bit I put in it, because that wasn't doing that a minute ago. Um, went and mowed this little piece over here. Seems pretty hot, but she's not... Ah, well, she is. She's pretty damn hot. It's hot enough to burn you, but she doesn't seem crazy hot. You know, not like don't think we're hitting 250 or anything uh, dipstick kind of looks empty but we're not blowing white smoke so we can't be burning that much oil um, yeah I don't know um, kind of want to finish mowing I think I'm gonna do that um, but can't see anything on the dipstick then again it is fresh oil no oh, there it's on there it's just recollecting yeah, it was like that all the other times I ran it so yeah, I think I'm going to persevere and uh, finish up this last little bit, Parker, and then uh, check on her after she cools down for a little bit and make sure everything's still working. Uh, the motor's running just fine, so it, I can't imagine that it's, you know, encountering too much trouble because uh, it's still got plenty of power. I'm still beating the shit out of it, and it's uh, not dying on me. Um, could just be running a little bit hot. Uh, I did not clean any of the cooling fins, but uh, she's she's pushing plenty of hot air, so there's there's heat transfer. But uh, as you can see, it's it's burning off something. I'm hoping it's just whatever is leaking out of that front crank seal, which is not a lot because you know I'm not seeing any particularly wet spots. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just kind of concerned now, but I'm not seeing anything that is. You know setting off any you know red flags just yellow flags well here she sits uh, she mows she's not terribly happy uh, got engine oil getting past the uh, crankcase breather and uh, transmission oil spitting out the top of the transmission breather but she cuts grass she cuts grass really well um, just now noticing that the uh, hour meter doesn't work either um, yeah, but uh, I think this is all just side effects of this being a 20-year-old, 1,000-hour mower. Um, kind of past my pay grade. I could I could do the front crank seal, but uh, don't really feel like it, uh, especially considering the hydraulics attached to it. I'd have to pull the entire engine out of here and a bunch of auxiliaries off of it to be able to do that, and I just don't feel like doing that for a small crank leak. Uh, I think the uh, 10W30 seems to have stopped the the crank seal leak for the most part because it's not really leaking anymore but the transmission is uh, gurgling the whole thing seems like it's getting too hot and it's like 50 degrees out so that's not a good sign for you know Charleston summertime mowing and this thing in 100 degree weather and hay but I did also just mow like three and a half acres straight with this thing which is uh, more mowing than it's seen in a good long while and that was heavy stuff. Um, we haven't mowed in like three months. So, yeah, but it, it mows, it cuts grass. Um, I, don't, I don't know. It's... It ain't happy. 
it, let's put it that way. It, it ain't happy, and uh, I don't know what what it needs to be happy. And uh, I think I'm done fooling with it. So, yeah, if you like this kind of stuff, remember to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, helps out the channel, gets more views, all that stuff. I don't like shilling, but uh, it's, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, yeah, I um, hope you have better luck than uh, I do with uh, your Yazoo. Till then, time out.